right, hi, my name is Hannah Hisa Kim from the KGSEA Math Circle, and today I will be giving a brief introductory lecture on stacks and queues. So stacks and queues are very common data structures used in computer science that are also used in other algorithms as well. So it's a pretty important concept to know. And also there won't be too much actual code in this lecture, but I will be using some C++. All right. Before we start, let's first review what data structures are. So you can basically think of data structures as a container to store and organize data efficiently. Some data structures that you might know are arrays, vectors, and graphs. Now there's a lot of different types of data structures and depending on the data you have and how you want to access it, the type of data structure that you use will be different. All right, uh, let's also review what an array is just for comparison to stacks and queues. So an array is a type of data structure that has a fixed size. So for example, this one here has a size of six and it's storing the data type integers. Now elements in an array are pretty easy to get because they all have um, an index number. So to access an element, you just have to reference them by the index number. So for example, in this case, array of two would be 17 and array of three would be four. All right, now let's look at what stacks are. So you can basically think of stacks as a Pringles can. So when you have Pringles, you can only take out the chips that are on the very top. And in order to get to the last Pringles that's on the very bottom, you have to take out everything that's on top of it. So it's basically the same for a stack. So you can think of a stack as like a vertical line of elements, where only the top element, um, only the top element can be removed. Um, so I'll talk more about insertion and deletion in the next slides, but keep in mind that a stack is a LIFO or last in first out data structure. Uh, so basically the element that's inserted last will also be the first to be taken out. And unlike arrays, stacks do not have a fixed size and the data can't be accessed by an index number. All right, so let's look deeper into insertion. So as I said before, if you add an element to a stack, it will be to the very top of the stack. So basically as you add more elements, you're just stacking them on top of each other. And the code for insertion is push. And this might be different in some other languages, but most of the time it's something like push. So you basically add the name of your stack dot push parentheses X. And X is the element that you're gonna insert. So if you have a stack here, and let's just call it S, and we want to add these two elements inside the stack. We would first do as dot push two, and this would insert two um, on top of 39. And if we do as dot push 17, 17 would go on top. All right, um, let's also look at deletion. So in a stack, only the element at the very top can be removed. So the code for this is pop. And unlike insertion, you don't need anything inside the parentheses because you're not um, specifying which value you want to remove. It'll always be the element at the very top. So if you look at this stack here, currently 17 is on the very top. So if you pop it once, 17 will be removed. And if you pop it again, two will be removed. Right, so here are some other functions that you can use with stacks. So top returns the element that's currently on top. And this doesn't actually change the stack itself, unlike insertion and deletion. It's only telling us what the element at the top currently is. And next, the empty command returns one if there's zero elements in the stack. So if the stack is empty, and it returns zero if the stack isn't empty. So if there's uh, at least one element in the stack. 
And lastly, size returns the size of the stack or the number of elements in it. All right, now let's look at an example code. So to use stacks in C++, you first need to include the header hashtag include stack. And to define a stack or make a stack, you do stack um, data type and the name of your stack. So you can see that right now I have a stack of type integer and I named it S. So right now I just added a few um, numbers into my stack, three, seven, four, and 11. And notice how the element that was added first, which is three, is at the bottom, and the element that was added last, 11, is at the top. Now, if I print the size of my stack, I'll get four, and the element currently on top is 11. Now, the second code is basically the same thing, but you can see that I popped two elements before getting my outputs. So when I popped it the first time, 11 was removed, and when I popped it again, four was removed. So now when I print the size of my stack, I get two and the element at the top is now seven. All right, so that's it for stacks. And now let's look at what queues are. All right, so you can basically think of a queue as a horizontal line of elements and the elements that are inserted first are also the first ones out. And this is called a first in first out data structure or FIFO. So when you add an element, you add it to the very back, but when you remove an element, you remove it from the front. And just like a stack, it doesn't have a fixed size or indexes. Okay, so let's also look at the insertion and deletion of an element in the queue. So this is very similar to the stack. It's just that when you add an element, it's added to the end. So if you look here, we currently have 39 in our queue. And if we insert two, you can see that two just lines up behind 39. And if we insert 17, 17 also lines up behind two. Um, but when we pop an element, you can see that the element at the front is getting deleted. So 39 becomes pop, and then if you pop it again, two becomes removed. So you can see that the elements are being popped in the order that they were added. All right, the other functions are almost uh, identical to the stack, and it's just that instead of using top, we use front. And this returns the element that's currently at the front, and just like top, it doesn't actually change the queue itself. And the empty function returns one if the queue is empty and zero if the queue is not empty. And the size returns the size of the queue or the number of elements. All right, so let's look at an example code for queues. So to use a queue, I have my header file here. And to make my queue, I did queue, data type, and the name. So I made a queue of type character um, with the name queue, and I inserted ABCD. So you can see that um, ABCD is just lined up here. And now when I output the size of my queue, I get four, and the queue is not empty because there's four elements in it, and the element at the front is A. Uh, in my second code, I popped an element before getting my outputs, and you can see that A, which was at the front, has been popped off. And so now the size of my queue is three, and the element at the front is now B. All right, so today we reviewed what data structures are, and we quickly went over how stacks and queues work, as well as some other commands that can be used with them. And if you want to practice coding problems with these topics, there's a lot of uh, problems on Beckjun. And if you want to go further into data structures, I recommend learning about Dex and priority queues. Right, so that's it for my presentation, and thank you for listening.